Hey, welcome to another episode of Florida Grown and Gathered. I'm Josh Harris and I'm out here today with my son Judah and we're at our property in northern Hernando County and we're up here. We wanted to check the trail camera and just did that. We have a lot of nice deer coming in, some nice bucks growing their antlers right now. And then also we wanted to look for mushrooms. We had a lot of rain, so we're doing a little mushroom foraging. And um, one of the things with mushrooms, you have to really um, be careful that you know what you're doing or you're with someone who's an expert um, because some, some of the mushrooms can be poisonous. So you definitely don't want to just go out and eat mushrooms without knowing exactly what they are. So um, we're looking for mainly chanterelles um, out here. We usually get those starting in July, running through the summer. And then there's a couple um, different species of um, milk caps, mushrooms um, that also grow out here that are edible. So that's what we're looking for today and we'll see if we find anything. Mm. Yeah, right there, that's a, what's called a Lactarius hygro for short but it has the broader ridges on the underside there. Usually the first place that I see the chanterelles in the summer are along the bank of this little sink here. And oh yeah, here they are. They're just starting to pop. See that bright yellow color growing out of this clay Those are beautiful. All right, Judah. First chanterelles of the season. It's just starting to pop all over the place here. Next time we come, it should be really good. We'll pick a few of the bigger ones today. <clears throat> These smell so good. They have almost like a fresh apricot, earthy smell to them. Summer is definitely not my favorite time of year here in Florida, but um, the mushroom hunting can be good later in the summer, especially. So, kind of try to figure out what I can do that's outdoors and fun, and at least get a little bit of outdoor time here in the summer. That's not miserable. Mostly, I'm just doing beekeeping in a bee suit, dying in the humidity and the heat. So it's nice to come out sometime and just do something a little different. Whoa, that's a weird looking mushroom here. Check this out, man. That one? Yeah, that thing is like so slimy looking. Touch it, Judah. Yeah. <laughs> the heck? Yeah. I don't know what oh, that yeah. is. It's just old. Oh, it's just like some old. kind of <laughs> old bullet mushroom. Yeah, I remember one time I found a big um, milk or a lactarius indigo growing around the edge here. Yeah, there's one mushroom. How deep is it here? Ooh, these tadpoles. Oh, gosh, it's deep. <laughs> Lots of spiders in the summertime. I'm just walking around, looking on the ground, see if any new mushrooms are sprouting up. We've had really heavy rain for the last few weeks here, and so these mushrooms have been growing for a while, so some of them are pretty old and soggy. We had a lot of rain earlier today. The mosquitoes are getting bad, biting my back. Judah has his blowgun. 
case he sees something he wants to get. We also brought the crossbow out. We figured when we checked the camera, if there was any hogs coming in, we could... Whoa, look at that. Speaking of hogs. Old hog jawbone. If there were any hogs, we could set up and try to hunt one tonight with the crossbow, but... Um, just deer, a lot of deer coming in, and um, deer season doesn't open until the middle of um, September for us here. So instead of sitting in the stand and messing it up, we're just going to get out of here before this evening and let those deer do their thing. But that's what seems to happen here. If there's not a lot of hogs coming in, the deer really get thick here, which um, I'll take that any day. Should have found some deer poop. We just have 6.3 acres up here, but it borders a lot of woods, a couple thousand acres of woods. So it's a kind of cool property. We do have a lot of diverse wildlife that come onto it. And when we're not using it a lot, they seem to get comfortable to come on the property. But as soon as we pressure it, it seems like they take off most of the time. One of the arusula mushrooms, these, some people seem to get sick on those, so I stay away from them. Oh, look at that. That's pretty cool. That's one of the old man of the woods varieties. This one, they get buggy quick. This one's definitely eating up little worms in it. That's no good. Oh, that one's cool. I don't know what. Doesn't really have it's some kind of little bull eat mushroom. I don't know what type that is. It's cool looking. If in doubt, throw it out. Do see a little hog sign here on the back of the property. I'm kind of surprised they're not coming to the feeder. Looks like some old wallows. Doesn't look real fresh though. I'm sure with all this rain, they'll start moving around. We'll see them at the feeder before too long. It is really hot and humid out, that's for sure. Hot, humid, and mosquito-y. And spidery. Oh my gosh. Think about walking in the summer woods, you're always getting big old spider webs in your face and those banana spiders crawling on you, freaking you out. Yeah, I'm not seeing a lot of, um, oh, I just say I'm not seeing a lot of chanterelles, and I see one. <laughs> That's a nice one. That's probably the prettiest one i found all day. That's a beautiful chanterelle mushroom. I feel a beautiful mosquito biting my back, too. Ow. Help me, Judah! <clears throat> little bull eat mushrooms with bugs all over them. But this one is definitely going in the bag. I've only been foraging for mushrooms a few years here in Florida, and so I'm by no means an expert but there are a few that I do know what they are and those are really the only ones that I'll forage to eat. And I'm always trying to learn more while I'm out here. And some of the easier ones to learn, I think, are the chanterelles. The lion's mane is a um, pretty easy one to learn and oyster mushrooms. So those are kind of the main ones that I focus on foraging. There's a few others, but um, there's a lot of mushrooms that I don't know what they are for sure, and so I don't chance it with those. So I really can't stress enough, you really have to know what you're eating before you try to eat any mushroom in the wild. And there's a bunch of new ones just starting to pop. We're going to leave these alone, and man, they're just starting to pop all over the place out here. Seeing them coming up here. There, everywhere, so another week or two, this property is going to be filled with chanterelles, which will be awesome. 
Oh, good find. Judy just found a patch of good ones. Putting his darts away so he doesn't accidentally poke himself. Get a little pile of them in the back here. Well, that's it for us. We're gonna get out of here. Our neighbor in front of us seems like whenever I pull up, he puts his outside um, sound system on, blasting music. So that's a little frustrating sometimes, especially trying to hunt out here, having music blaring from the property in front of us. But I'm um, right here. We have that's a little ground blind, and then we have a. A feeder back here and that's where our camera set up that's where we've been getting those pictures of the deer coming in and then also have a little ladder stand set up right up in here as well there it is that's the feeder Walking out of here, found a really good find. This is another type of the chanterelle. The, a lot of times they're called cinnamon. Chanterelles are a darker color, usually a little smaller. These things are beautiful. It's a nice little patch of them here. Yeah, go ahead and grab all those. These ones usually don't get much bigger than this. nice well that's it foraging for chanterelle mushrooms in um, central florida now we're going to go home and figure out how to incorporate them in our dinner tonight <laughs>